Well, I have one, one comment, uh, if I may. Sure, go ahead. When we were talking, you, you gave me a gift. I did? You did. Oh. <laughs> and it's this gift when we share with one another, when we come from different paths. And I, I found that when we let go of our jargon, our, I call this sort of the box that contains our belief system and our theology is like our container. And I wish Charles Gibbs was still here on the call, but that's okay. Cause he's right now in a milieu of boxes. <laughs> But anyone who goes to that conference will find that their box will, will become unhinged or there can't be communication mm. because you can't come into an interfaith circle without letting go of the framework. And the only thing that will speak is how have you walked your path, the how, the what, what's inside the container. And, and I remember sharing with you, and I never said those things before, that it takes a lot of courage to let go of your container and to be the genie outside of the bottle and still be the genie, still be the spirit, still be the life force. And then you touch someone else's life force outside of their box. That's where I think we, this validation, it, I always go, well, what is it? Why is it when we learn about someone else's tradition or faith, why is it that I feel validated? Mm. Why do I feel enriched? Why do I feel I'm a better Christian or a better Jew or a better um, um, ecumenical spiritual person? Um, <clears throat> And that's because we let go of the container. And when we do that, the connector, the wire, is that stillness for me. You know, the awe of the human fabric when we connect. You know, that, the, the tapestry, the beauty. Um, so I thank you. Uh, uh, for that conversation, Arie, and I, it, I never was able to articulate or answer that question that I've had for years. Uh, thank, well, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, thank you for that comment. Um, Kay, I see that you, you'd uh, like to speak. I actually have a question for you, Sister Elizabeth. Um, I, I'm so moved by and find a, a yet another connection by the the work that the Brahma Kumaris and it, you and the Brahma Kumari sisters do around the world. It's something I'd love to know more about, um, especially how you are first responders to global catastrophes and how you help relieve trauma, um, how you work with people who whose lives um, are so far from stillness. They're that turbulent lake that maybe seems endless. Mm -hmm. Sure. So you want me to answer that? Yeah, I'd love to know how, how you work as first responders and how you help relieve this suffering and trauma. Can you do that one in two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I would have to just kind of go by theory because I've never had to do that. I, for personal traumas, I can, I can relate. Mm -hmm. where, where people come, when, when, you, when you lose a child to a, like suicide, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything more traumatic to a parent than that. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing could, can make sense. Right. And, um, experience has told me, but then this is my personal experience, is that I don't try to imagine that I know what they're going through. Right. And, and the second thing is I don't, I, I don't give an energy of, of pity. Mm -hmm. 
or, or even mercy. I try to meet them at their level. And I think what Raj Yoga Meditation has taught me is by being the observer of life's events and because I'm, I'm naturally, um, I'm more of an extrovert. I'm, um, I come from theater arts. I'm more expressive. I also get influenced or I also suffer from empathy. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, you know, so you can relate perhaps being when a, you have a nurse practitioner and someone who works in um, mental health care. Um, that I have to, I had to learn to be more objective and that you better serve. And this is what Raj Yoga has taught me mm-hmm. is the art of being objective. But then of course, um, our brother in the Ivory coast was, or no, actually it was she tell you were saying that long distance between the heart and the head and the Brahma Kumaris talk a lot about that balance of heart and head. And um, so then the steps would be for me if there was, if that I've heard and that I would personally could relate to um, reading the reports um, of the tsunami in, in, um, and earthquakes in, in India and in Malaysia and, and so on, where we have a big presence. Um, they, of course, brought van loads of supplies. I mean, mm-hmm. you're not, you don't have a roof over your head and you don't have food for your stomach. That's number one. I mean, you have to take care of that first. And then, you know, you, as any mental health care practitioner knows, there's these like levels of denial, mm-hmm. pain and anguish, and hopefully moving to acceptance. Mm-hmm. And where I think the spiritual component that I really feel proud of with, with the Brahma Kumaris or the Raj Yoga language is helping a person to facilitate a person through by empowering the human spirit. Mm-hmm. Who am I? By, by this, this could be you know, a window of opportunity for an individual. When we're going through something, it is not fun. We don't want to be there. This isn't fair. How could this be happening? There, there is no God. But once we've passed it, and, it's an, and we've, we've survived something, we can look, why is it we can, at that moment, we can look back and say, wow, I really, I took so much benefit. I wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, I wouldn't have had this courage or this sense of authority. I wouldn't be able to help people with this confidence that I, I, I'd never had before. And so, or we can even laugh at ourselves. We find humor in the paradoxes of life. Mm-hmm. But, exactly. so I would just say that, that going in it, to be able to find that place in, the, in that present moment, to, to find, even if it's for a moment, it brings so much strength to the human spirit. Thank you. It's a very uh, personal answer. Oh, looks like uh, Wendy's uh, uh, would like to speak. Go ahead, Wendy. Yes, I just wanted to share something that has given me a lot of comfort, and we heard this from um, uh, a, a rabbi who uh, heard it from a, a rabbi who um, does a lot of work in, in terms of uh, loss and, and healing. And what she related was that somebody said, um, and sometimes you just feel like, I don't know how I can get through this. I just can't do it. And what she said was that, no, you can't in, in the person that you are now, but you can in the person that you are becoming, mm-hmm. that you can get through this. And I just love that quote. Um, and it also speaks to the mystery of when things happen, it's, it's, it's a complete mystery. And um, for me, honoring that mystery has been very, very helpful and very comforting. Mm. 
a beautiful quote. Yeah. Um, let's see. I wanted to ask, I see you, Charles. Um, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me unmute you. Chuck. Yeah. So um, we've been um, uh, praising silence and stillness. I, I also want to put in a plug for, uh, for movement and noise. Uh, the reality is, as we all know, that a lot of times we're not in a place of stillness and silence, and yet we have to somehow find a way to love and be grateful and present and in, 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 in as inadequate a way as, 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 as it is. But nonetheless, I, one of the things about my Jewish background that, I, emphasize, that I, I love so much is that, yes, you're supposed to have the right presence and the right motive and intention, but ultimately the deed, like you, you still have to help that person, even if you're not in the right place. So love can still come through your actions, even if your, your mind's sort of flittering around and your body is shaking and so on, there's still a power to the deed. Yeah. Beautiful thought. Um, Shital, I wanted to ask you if, uh, if you have any uh, uh, questions or reflections that you'd like to add. Um. Sounds like you're in stillness. Yeah, I'm genuinely just loving. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a space of love and I'm just gonna ripple that back out to you. No words, thank you. Thank you. Um, Natasha, any, uh, any last thought or question from you here? Yes, I'm um, very grateful for participating and hearing everyone. Um, and I was just thinking again about my fields. Um, when I become still and quiet, my clients and others feel that. So uh, to me, it's been <laughs> very helpful and um, it's empowering in so many ways uh, just to practice that because um, we are sensitive to energies. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay.